Well, what does Gungubele's new position as the new political head of state security mean, considering he is a minister in the presidency? Well, to help us understand, we're joined now by former intelligence minister Ronnie Casrills. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Casrills. Uh, you know, this is clearly a growing centralization of power. We can only presume that what is going through a president's mind when he makes this decision is that he's feeling alarmed and he's feeling insecure and concerned about the state of the security cluster. Yes, well, uh, thanks for having me, Annika, and good morning. Uh, he's got every right to be concerned, as all of us uh, citizens uh, of this country uh, and all the political parties in that parliamentary oversight role. Um, you know, this is not the first time there's been a um, minister within cabinet with this kind of oversight role. Um, we go back to the Nelson Mandela presidency. We didn't have a minister for intelligence in those days. Um, and Mr. Mandela, President Mandela, appointed Dalla Omar, Minister of Justice, as executive in control of intelligence. In other words, the intelligence agencies had to report through him to cabinet and to the president. So I don't think we should be unduly alarmed and feel that this just denotes a concentration of enormous and unhealthy power within the presidency. I don't see it that way. Um, we've had enough problems within the security and intelligence agencies for any honest and decent president to feel that he has through, in this case now, uh, the, the minister in the presidency, oversight. And um, in terms of what we know about the abysmal failings of the uh, intelligence services, um, consequent of the July mayhem, to ensure that he has in the first place immediate um, information and forewarning about threats to the country. And, you know, that's greatly in need. Secondly, in terms of the whole dysfunction of security intelligence in this country, there is the need for greater executive oversight. There's been so many failings, corruption, malfeasance, um, operational uh, problems, etc., the morale degeneracy within the intelligence services, that it does need closer oversight from the executive level. Of course, and I agree here with the criticism forthcoming from parliamentary party at the political parties, uh, the question is, what if we have a president who we just don't trust? And we've seen this with a former president who presided before Cyril Ramaphosa, and that's Jacob Zuma. So it's much more than simply um, bringing the intelligence services under the executive control uh, in the step that President Ramaphosa is taking. He has before him the recommendations of the Mufamadi panel. Um, and that's now since 2019. The key thing to ensure that there is proper control and the reform of the security and intelligence services is to follow through on the enormous recommendations of the Mufamadi panel, which, by the way, go way back to my days as minister. That was 2004 to eight, because of the problems that occurred uh, with the false and the hoax emails at that time, the politicization and corruption within the services. We had the Matthews Commission report, and the Mufamadi panel report is simply an extension of that. It goes into it much deeper. But we've had these reports that have been begging for implementation. So it's not simply that we have a minister in the presidency in terms of that executive oversight, in terms of policy, 
um, of, of the services and that they stick to a mandate, et cetera, and that they provide quality information in immediate and importantly good time, but that the structures are reformed, that a new culture is created. It takes time, but we're wasting time. I really beseech the president to follow through on those recommendations. We don't know if he's going to be here uh, for a second term. He's certainly not going to be here for a third term. We have to reform the entire institution, which is absolutely murky and dysfunctional. It's a house of smoke and mirrors gone terribly wrong. And that's where the nub of this whole thing lies. It's uh, parliamentary Kis oversight is going to be extremely important with this as well. Mr. Casrills, two questions. We don't have much time. But the growing centralization of power, I think, would be of more concern if there was a less benign appearing president uh, at the helm and uh, Monli Gungubele was uh, not seen as being sort of uh, male malevolent, which he's not. But talk to me about the run up to conference this year, the ANC's conference. It already feels as if it's spies out of control, that uh, there's been some kind of attempts uh, to destabilize democracy. Your thoughts on the year of 2022 that we're possibly in for? Yes, I, I, you know, this is key and this is what's obviously impelled the president to make this move now, which he could have made six months ago. Um, it's going to be, let's face it, a year of a roller coaster ride. We'd better all buckle in our seat belts very tight. It's a political year that's going to be very brutal and contested. You see, if you go back to Polokwane and uh, the, the succession from Mbeki to Zuma, we've seen it before. We can see how the intelligence services already split then and with people playing devious um, roles in terms of the faction of the, the Zuma faction at that time, and, and which then came to power uh, and, and is so responsible for the mess, largely for the mess that we're in. So this is why um, President Ramaphosa was moved speedily to put in place the controls and the key controls over intelligence that the Mofamadi panel calls for. It, it's um, the, the whole aspect of that report will take many years to implement, but they are crucial ones in terms of ensuring that there's proper control over the services, over the chiefs, that they cannot put a foot wrong, that they cannot play a factionalist political game, that the control of their funds, very key must be extremely tight. The Inspector General Parliament must ensure these things. Uh, the presidency must ensure these things and be open to any question of is the presidency using the funds in an incorrect way? We call for that kind of openness. <laughs> There's very little time. We into 2022. These uh, big conference um, uh, uh, events are just around the corner. He's got to act swiftly in that respect to block up the loopholes that um, could lead to the kind of problems that occurred at Polokwane so many years ago, in short. Thank you so much, Mr. Casuals. I'm uh, very happy to see that you're in fine fettle again. And uh, we hope to chat to you. As you say, it's going to be a roller coaster of a year, uh, certainly in the political milieu.